The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Pressure on. Crowd making noise. Here is Carter. Throws it. It is picked off. Ashante Williams. He's going to get a pick six, I think. He's down to 20. He's gone. First and 10. Backwards pass to Ferguson. He's going to throw it. He's got a man open in the end zone. Touchdown. Spencer Harris with the catch. And hi, everybody. Brian Barnhart reporting from Champaign here on Fighting Illini Insider, where we join you uh, without a football game to talk about this week. It was a bye week for Tim Beckman's Fighting Illini football team, but we will talk basketball with Illini women's basketball coach Matt Boland. Also be joined on the set this week by Illini men's coach uh, for the uh, men's basketball team, John Gross. And we'll talk about the Illini Street Jam, which took place recently at the start of basketball practice at the corner of Wrights and Green on campus. All that straight ahead, but first a look at Illini Street Jam, then a visit with the coaches here on Fighting Illini Insider.
Welcome back as we talk some basketball here with football having a bye week. We're joined on the set, uh, first of all, by women's basketball coach Matt Bolunt in his second year. And, Coach, good to see you again. I know uh, you've been getting ready, gearing up uh, during this whole offseason, recruiting workouts, and now you can finally start practicing. Yeah, great to have the 20 hours per week. You know, you don't, two hours a week is just enough to kind of get your taste wet, but it's not enough to really develop anything. So it's great that we have something, but the 20 hours is really needed to get us going. As you look back at the end of last year and got ready for this year, obviously two scores that are not, no longer with you, Adrian Godbold, Charisma Penn, uh, both gone. How do you replace them? Yeah, you know, Sarah Hartwell sat out last year, transferred from Georgia Tech, and I feel like we're going to be better one through four. There's no question about it. Our guards are just better. They pass better. They shoot better. You know, all the stats that we keep for the shooting uh, during our two hours a week and now 20 hours a week, we're a night and day better shooting basketball team, passing better but, you know, team than we were last year. The question is going to be the five. You know, can we have someone step in and, and fill? I don't know that we're going to have someone score 19 points a game there like Charisma did. But, you know, I think with that position, now that we've added a, a secondary break and a motion offense, uh, we had our first scrimmage today, and I just uh, statted out the first scrimmage. And, you know, we, and in the first scrimmage, first five minutes, we scored 15 points, and eight of those came from our fives, uh, Piper, uh, Mackenzie Piper and Sarah Livingston. And so we're going to be able to get some baskets inside as well. I would think so, Matt. As a, a new head coach, you come in, you're looking at, okay, you've got the players you inherit and you try to fit the system to work however mm -hmm. they're going to play. But now you got kind of more of your own players. Do you change the way you play from a year ago? Yeah, you do. And you know, I really, uh, we used Dick Bennett's line a lot last year. The first year is about the players. Find a way to help them have success. And if we would have taught a motion offense and secondary break to them, we'd have spent the whole year with not hardly any success. Because it just, it's a long teach, it takes a long time to teach motion offense. And so we spent the spring, summer, and fall doing that. Um, but it's it's a struggle to learn. When you've never run motion offense, kids have never moved without the ball, they've ne never set and used screens before, then it's a long teach. So it takes some time. We're still gonna run our dribble drive like we did last year and the Illini break into it, Phoenix break into it. So uh, we'll have that combination. And the combination of the two is, is really good offense. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're gonna be better offensively because of it. And we got familiar with the buzz last year. We did. We set the Big Ten <laughs> record for the most forced turnovers in the history of women's basketball in the Big Ten last year. So yeah. Averaged 25.6 forced turnovers a game. We set the steal record, the Big Ten, the most steals in the, in the history of the Big Ten as well. So uh, certainly it gave us a bonus. We're going to be better in our man, and it, that will also help us in the buzz as well. We played it more than we wanted to last year because we just weren't very good in our man or not as good as we wanted to be. So the combination of man being better this year will also help our buzz. Well, Matt, tell us a little more about uh, the new players this year or returning faces. Who, who are we going to see on the court? Yeah, Sarah Livingston's you know, set out to transfer from Georgia Tech, and she was one of our best players on the court every day last year. Uh, I think Alexis Smith has gotten a lot better from last year. Certainly, we're going to count on Ivory Crawford and Amber Moore, you know, a senior and junior there, to do a lot for us. Uh, and then it'll be interesting to new kids. Sarah Livingston's doing extremely well. She has just learned. You know, she came in, and I would have probably told you the summer when she got here, she was our number three post. And as of today, she's our number one post. So uh, it'll be interesting see as she keeps the learn learning and to see how she progresses uh, as well. You know, Kylie Simmons is a transfer that has to sit out this year. She's been uh, just amazing in practice. But the kids that are, are, are returning, you know, Alexis and Amber and Ivory, we're expecting them to do good things, certainly with Sarah Hartwell. Taylor Gleason's a freshman from Michigan, should have won the Miss Basketball uh, in the state of Michigan. Had she gone to Michigan or Michigan State, I think she probably would have been the Miss Basketball, but because she chose us, uh, they gave it to another player. So, but she's had a really good fall as well. Jackie Grant's a 6'3 girl from Chicago, very talented. And so we're excited about our new kids and, you know, eight of our, our 14 are new players that we brought in and uh, those kids are very talented. And along with the returners, I think we're going to have a good mix. Tell me about the, the schedule this year. That's always important too as you set that up. It is. You know, our first game's at Bradley and they're going to have a, a, a kid day and have uh, every kid in Peoria is going to be at that game uh, and they're going to bust them in. So probably have five to 7,000 kids at that game. Uh, then we have some home games. We've got four home games. We'd love to have a crowd come out and support us there. Uh, and then we go to Cancun and play North Carolina who had the number one recruiting class in the country. Uh, their freshman class is by far the best in the country. Uh, play Arizona State is very good and Arkansas State. Come back and play Colorado, at Colorado, at Georgia, at Georgia Tech. So we have a, <laughs> have a very tough schedule. We'll play Seton Hall and Tennessee Martin at home. Tennessee Martin was an NCAA team last year, returned their two top players from that. So we have a very challenging schedule and it's gonna, uh, we're going to see where we're at. Attendance went way up last year at the State Farm Center. Now uh, you've got 
A lot of games at home again. I know you're wanting to have a lot of more season tickets. Yeah, too. really important to our success. I know we've already sold 200 more season tickets from last year, that, uh, the uh, grown over last year. Uh, and one of the things, we lost a recruit last year to Michigan State. She came to our game and there was 4,000 fans, our biggest crowd of the year. And then she went to the Michigan State game and there's 13,000 uh, at that game. We have to increase our attendance. We need the community support to, to do this. And we have recruits come. And the one thing, they'll, the negative that we've had so far with recruiting has been you don't have as good an atmosphere at, at your game as the other places I go, we go. And we had a top 25 recruiting class. Our freshmen were ranked as top 25 recruiting class. You know, this fall we're about to have another top 20 recruiting class. And so uh, we're doing our part. We just need the fans to come out. It's only $25 <laughs> for a, a season ticket, $75 for reserved. Uh, we need the community's help to help build great atmosphere, not only help us win home games, but it's also going to make a huge difference in recruiting. Coach, we're looking forward to it. Hard to believe basketball season's already here. So good luck to you and your team. We'll look forward to talking to you down the road. Thank you. It's an exciting time of year. All right, head coach Matt Boland with the Illini women's team. When we come back, we'll visit with Illini head coach for the men, John Gross. All that straight ahead as we continue here on Fighting Illini Insider. Well, we talked to Matt Boland a little bit ago. Now we're joined by Illini men's basketball coach John Gross as we look forward to the start of the basketball season for the men as well. And Coach, a little different this year. You actually got to start earlier in practice. We did completely different. We, we really like it, Brian, to be honest with you. It gives our guys a chance to have more days off in a bigger block of time, which I think is better for them from a physical health perspective, uh, getting mentally refreshed. Uh, it's also better from the standpoint of teaching. You know, if, when I was a classroom teacher, you, you had those kids that tried to cram for tests mm -hmm. at the last second. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like when we started on October 15th, especially with a new team like we have this year with nine new players, you were cramming everything in in about two weeks to play an exhibition game. Now you have a longer period of time. I think it makes teaching the game uh, a lot easier. One of the things that uh, was kind of fun, an event uh, that you and the marketing uh, team came up with, was the street jam uh, the other night uh, out on campus. Talk about that and how that went. Well, it was an awesome event. And uh, the DIA and specifically marketing, you know, Jenny Larson and her crew did a fantastic job. It was as good a preseason event as I've ever attended. Um, I thought it was terrific and really drummed up a lot of excitement for the upcoming basketball season. You mentioned uh, new faces, and certainly uh, not every year you get this many new faces on one team, do you? Let's hope not. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that one again. Yeah. So nine of them, uh, but it also makes, uh, makes you feel young. I mean, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, you're starting at uh, you know, ground level. I keep reminding our staff in order in certain areas of our system, whether it's offensively and defensively, in order to get to first grade, you got to pass kindergarten. And then to get to second grade, you have to pass first grade. So you know, we're going through some of that right now, but I like our guys. Uh, we have great character and uh, really great morale on our team, which is certainly a, a great starting point. And part of that, uh, as you brought them in as, as freshmen when they got started in school during the summer and went through some SEALs training, we're going to see a little video on that later, but certainly trying to get them acclimated to, to college life first. No question. I think the transition, you know, from uh, obviously from high school to college or here to Illinois, which is such a great academic institution as well as high level basketball. So they're doing both of those things for the first time you know, at this level, and, it, and there is a transition period, that's for sure. The summer months uh, allowed us, I think, to acclimate them a little bit easier, so we're thankful for that. You do have a lot of new players, but there are some familiar names. Uh, Nana's back, Nana Egwu, you got Tracy Abrams, Mike LaTulip, Joe Bertrand. You can kind of build on those guys to start, I guess. We can, and those guys have done a great job, whether it's Joe coming off of the injury uh, and getting himself in shape, his strength gains, his body fat's dropped, uh, Nana up to 250 pounds. Uh, Tracy, I think, has become a guy uh, much more uh, steady with his mindset, which has really helped him. I really like how he's really helped our new players throughout the summer and the fall. Um, you know, LaTulip also has grown in a lot of areas. Uh, Rice has as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, over the last year, you know, Rice has made strides in several areas, his body, strength, conditioning, his game. So all those guys certainly have helped us lay a great foundation along with the seniors that just left here heading into year two. Tell me about uh, the schedule now as you look at it for uh, this 2013-14 season. Well, right now the thing we're most worried about is practice, you know, right <laughs> now. So for us, you know, our, our first exhibition game is October 24th against McKendree, and that's really all we're worried about, especially with a new team. You know, one day at a time, we, we say as a staff, every day is day one. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And that's how we've approached it, and that's the mindset we want our players to have. Yeah. As you look at it, though, as you look at uh, everything, all the usual games will take place, the Missouris and all of that. So that really hasn't changed. Uh, a lot of that is set for you in advance. It is. We have a very unique you know, non-conference schedule in that we uh, have a United Center game every year, a United Center return, uh, the Missouri game in St. Louis, the ACC Big Ten Challenge. So a lot of those games are set in stone, uh, and we like them. I think it's great for – uh, the university. It's great for our program, great for college basketball, and you know we're excited to tackle it. We are. Uh, it's going to be challenging for sure. Uh, I believe we play seven contests here at home and six either away or on neutral sites. So we're going to find out a lot about our team very quickly. And you're going to play in a building with a new name, State Farm Center. We are. Yeah, to get used to that. <laughs> yeah, very, very excited to partner with State Farm. Uh, just quality people and and uh, uh, you know, basically a company that's, that's recognized globally you know, as a powerhouse. So we're, we feel very blessed to be associated with State Farm. Real quick, Coach, as you look at uh, year number two, and obviously a lot of the guys that uh, were with the team last year were not your players. Now you've brought in new guys and developing those. Will the offense, will the defense look much different this year or not? There'll be some things that are the same. You know, there'll be some things that are different based on our personnel. You know? and, and obviously, I mean, we talk about guys we brought in, you know, once you've played for us, you're our guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, those guys last year will always be our guys. Sure. And, you know, but we're excited here with year two. There'll be some adaptation for sure, you know, no question about it. And I think we wrinkle our system every year based on our personnel strengths, but, you know, this year maybe more so than normal. Well, Coach, we're looking forward to it. Start of practice, as you say, every day gearing up. The orange and blue scrimmage not far away. Then the first exhibition game, and you'll kind of build from there. So we'll look forward to it. Well, thanks. It'll be here before you know it. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, we appreciate it. Head Coach John Gross with us here. When we come back, we'll take a look and talk about that uh, SEALs uh, training they went through earlier this summer. All that straight ahead as we continue on Fighting Illini Insider. Welcome back. Brian Barnhart here on Fighting Illini Insider. Well, this last summer, the Illini men's basketball team underwent some rigorous training as the Navy SEALs came to town. Let's take a look at that right now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Our team, no walking. If you are true champions, what we do in the next three days will not phase you. Champions love adversity, they love it when it sucks. They're not going to whine and complain. They're like, bring me more, bring it, give me more. Is that all you got? I want more. That's the attitude you got to have. Is that all you got? Bring it. Go! Mason, you push up with this, you're going to lose your spot. Come on, come on. 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 No matter how much I encourage you, you can still win if you use this. One, two, three, go! Go!
And that's going to wrap it up for this week's show from Champaign on Fighting Illini Insider. And we appreciate our coaches being with us, Matt Boland, the Illini women's coach, and Illini men's basketball coach, John Gross. Coming up next week, we'll talk about the Illini football game at home against Wisconsin. That'll be next week's show for everybody involved, for the two coaches and our entire production team. I'm Brian Barnhart. We'll talk to you soon on the Fighting Illini Insider.